All right, y'all, so here's the deal. I got that new rear end with the LSD in uh, Roscoe here. I took it out for a drive and all that stuff, did some burnouts, but it was making the entire time, it was making a bearing noise. At first, because it kind of sounded like bad brakes. At first, I thought I had the e-brake shoes together wrong, so I went and looked at that. That was all fine, so the only thing left was really the bearings inside of the, uh, inside of the differential housing. So I pulled that back out, and let's go take a look at it right here. This is it. There's no guts inside of it because I have those over in the vise, but listen to this bearing here. I don't know how well you can hear that on camera, but it's going er, 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 while I'm turning. So that pinion bearing, one of those two pinion bearings is totally shot. So I pulled that LSD out of that differential. It's right here on the vise. And I'm gonna put that LSD into the old rear end that was in Roscoe previously and put that back into Roscoe. I did. I should have done that in the first place, but I didn't want to because I didn't want to have to mess with backlash or tooth engagement or anything, but I already checked everything uh, with the old bolts and everything lines up. Tooth engagement's good. Backlash is good. I'm going to check it all again with my dial indicator and my, my paintbrush over there when I get it all back together for final installation, but I got new bolts right here and I'm just getting them torqued down. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to torque this ring gear down. By the way, I used the old ring gear I took the old ring gear off the open differential and put it onto the LSD so that the same ring gear and pinion stayed together. That was my hope of keeping everything the same. And I also used the same shims off of, I used the same shims that were in Roscoe previously. So everything is original other than the LSD and everything lined up good. Backlash was good. Tooth engagement was good. And the LSD had, uh, let, uh, the run out was within spec. It was like 2000. So Everything was good to go. I'm gonna get this thing all torqued up, put it all back together, and throw this thing in here, this rear end in here finally, and it should uh, hopefully make no noises. So let's get after it. By the way, the torque spec for these ring gear bolts is 100 foot pounds, or is between 97 and 102, so I'm just gonna hit the sweet spot there and go 100. And I pressed this ring gear on in a press, so uh, I'm gonna skip the initial torque of like 18 foot pounds. It doesn't really say you have to do it incrementally, but I think it's a good idea to do it incrementally. I'm gonna start with 50 foot pounds and then work my way up to 80. I already hit these all with 50, so I'm gonna start with, uh, uh, I'm gonna go straight up to 100 from there, rather not 80. So we're at 50, I'm gonna go straight up to 100, which is maxed out on this torque wrench. Actually, I'm gonna grab my big torque wrench and use that one instead. All right, here we go. And as soon as I pull the ratchet off, I just mark it with a Sharpie so that I remember which ones I torqued. Get that shim and race ready to go. Shim goes taper side towards the axle. So the taper side will go in this way. You'll have the flat, the wider side facing the, uh, the bearing. I don't know how many different ways I can say that, but. <laughs> Put some assembly a little bit in there. All right, now I'll grab the race and the shim, stick them on there. And I'll actually just stick the, race, the shim down and where it goes for now. Grab this other side. And I'll hold this other shim and the race together. So one shim's already in there and the other one's in my hand. All right, now I'll drop this down in here. Perfect. There it all goes. Now we'll uh, torque it down, check backlash, check tooth pattern engagement, and check run out one more time. Button it all back up, fill it up with fluid. Fill it up with fluid, then button it back up. And we'll be ready to rip. All right, as per the Ford 8.8 inch differential PDF that I got from Eric the Car Guy, I'll link his video down in the description. These are somewhere between 90 and 100 foot pounds, so I'm gonna go ahead and torque those now, and I'm gonna do those again in increments. I'm gonna start with a low torque setting. I'm gonna go with like, uh, let's say 30 foot pounds. We'll start with 30, then I'll go 60, then we'll go 100. So, let's do that. It 
There we go. And we'll bump her up to 60. Beautiful. And good. All right. This thing's all torn down. Ford spec is 8 to 12. So that's what we're going to go for. Okay, so as far as backlash goes, I'm getting about nine, which is right in spec on the tight side. That's fine with me. I'm gonna check it in a couple of different places and we'll hope for similar results. Okay, run out looks good. This is how I got it checked. I got it up against this machine surface right here. And I just got it zeroed in. And we're spinning the dial around nice and slow. And she never strays. Run out if it's more than 0 0.003. So three thousandths of an inch. Case is damaged, you gotta throw her away. But this thing is good to go. So we're happy on that. And when it bumps over that, there's just a little nick right there in it. So that's what's uh, what it's doing that for. But uh, this thing's good to go. Run out's good, backlash is good. Last thing I gotta check is the gear tooth pattern. Then this is good to go. So, take my pry bar, load it up. Try to go the right way here. Load her up. As you can see right there, it's pretty much, I don't know if you can tell, see, let me get the iPhone out. And you can see right here, our gear tooth pattern looks pretty good. Pretty dead center on the drive side. And the coast side, coast side looks about the same. Pretty dead center. Look at that, I'm pretty happy with that. This thing's buttoned up and ready to go back in the car. All right, I got baby sleeping right here. I got the rear end underneath the car right there. So time to just get everything lined back up and bolted up, but I'm trying to do it nice and quiet so we don't wake baby up. She's got to eat in about a half an hour, so I want her to stay asleep for about another 30 minutes.
Alrighty folks, check it out. No car sideways in the garage anymore. We got the rear end back in Roscoe. Everything went back together perfectly. Uh, I've been driving it around for the last couple days and no bearing noises, no nothing. Everything's good to go. Everything's great. So I'm gonna head over to a buddy's house. He knows a place where we can go test out this new LSD. So that's exactly what we're gonna go do. And here we are at freeway speed. She's tracking nice and straight. No vibrations, no weird noises. Everything sounds good. Going about 60 miles an hour here. All right, we got the drift tires on Roscoe. Yeah. We picked up my buddy. Let's go take this thing out for a rip. Get the GoPro set up in the window here. Let's go hit this little neighborhood right here. Wanna record yeah. from the yeah. for me? Alrighty, we found a nice little parking lot here in Mexico. Let's see how much better we can slide this baby with both those wheels spinning. All right, let's do it. Oh, he's Alrighty, folks, Roscoe here is all put back together, but but I do have Enos over here on jack stand so I can go over this one last time real quick and show you all the things you got to do to take it off. And I promise this is a really quick job. Swapping out this rear end may seem a little bit daunting, but it's easy. Remove the brake caliper. One bolt here, one bolt down below. Pop that off. Then you could pull this rotor off. Remove all the e-brake guts on the inside. It's just some springs and some clips. Then once that's all out of the way, you wanna to go to the back, pull your e-brake line out of the back of this housing. You literally just pull it out and then remove your wheel speed sensor, okay? Once you've done that and you remove the e-brake line, the e-brake cable from those couple points right there, you see that hook right there? There's a bolt on the other side of it. You could see the end of it poking through right there. Unscrew those bolts. I think they're 10s or 12s. It's attached in two places and then it also hooks in up there on the top of the diff. So just undo this cable the whole way. And then all you have to do is crawl underneath the car, disconnect the four bolts for the drive line, and then that one bolt for the Watts link right there, that one bolt on top, you can leave the other two in. Then you're done with everything underneath the car. So you can climb back out, unbolt your sway bar if you have one. This is the 04 model. It does not have a sway bar, but my 08 does have a sway bar. So if you have a sway bar, unbolt it. If not, then you can go straight to this shock right here. Take this shock loose first. Your whole axle will drop down once you get that bolt out of there. Then you can pull your coil spring out and you'll have enough room to reach back here with an impact driver and zip this bolt out right here. And then zip this bolt out on the bottom. Do the same thing on the other side. 
and boom, Bob's your uncle. This thing's ready to come down. Alrighty, folks, there you have it. That's all it takes to remove and replace your rear end on a Crown Victoria. And this goes for pretty much anything with a Ford 8.8 inch rear end. All those are gonna be pretty much the same process. So in the end, basically all I ended up doing was swapping it out for an LSD carrier, but still you got all the information you need. You can go do this exact same swap, whether you wanna swap the entire rear end or you just wanna swap out the LSD carrier. Now you have all the information you need to do it yourself. Alrighty folks, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.